I have some fragrance companies that have truly let me down. Hey fragrance family, I'm Dave and I'm a fragrance bro. Of course, your best source for everything fragrance related. Today I have a video that's talking about some fragrance houses that have really let me down. Now, over the years, you know, you try out some things on your journey with fragrances, some you really like, and then some you grow out of liking. And so today I'm gonna be talking about some of the houses that I just used to like, but I don't like anymore. I'm gonna go from least to greatest offense on this list. And you know, I reserve the right to change my mind, of course. Maybe these companies will turn a new leaf and they'll release a fragrance that I really love. But for the most part, I just really don't like these houses anymore. Now, first on the list is Chanel. Now, this may come as a surprise to you because Chanel is a powerhouse in the perfume world. And I do think that it is for women's perfumes. For men's, I don't really find that to be the case. They have some that are good. Blue de Chanel is good. Uh, Allure Homme Sport is good. Platinum Ego East is good. But they're not releasing great fragrances for men anymore. They've just kind of released kind of just average style fragrances. Maybe they're really popular, but I just don't find them to be very good. On the women's side, however, I think they are releasing a lot of stuff that is really excellent. And even with their exclusive line, their more kind of boutique uh, line in their range, I think that line is better and I think that it offers more. It's really sad because I don't find Chanel to be much of a leader, especially in men's fragrances anymore. But hopefully that changes. Next is Montal, and I will even kind of put Mansara in there as well. Now, both of these houses are excellent. I think they have really great fragrances with high quality ingredients. However, they are just wearing out every version of a fragrance that they can. What I really dislike about Montal especially is that they release fragrance after fragrance after fragrance every year at a breakneck speed as if it's a race. I really wish they would slow down and fine tune the fragrances more maybe and then be more selective about what they release. They have an extensive catalog that is so big that it's almost impenetrable. To someone who is just coming into fragrances, who wants to try the Montal line, there is a catalog of you know hundreds of fragrances and all of them sound very similar. All of them have, you know, like Oud in the name or something, <laughs> even though they don't smell like Oud at all. For instance, Oud candy. It smells like black licorice. <laughs> Now, the reason I lumped Mansara in there as well is because there is a connection with Montal. I don't exactly know what it is, but it seems like there is a drama or bad blood between them. They kind of seem uh, like they release similar fragrances at similar times, and so what do I care if one fragrance comes out with one thing and the other one comes out with another thing? You just kind of get either or. Now, I find Mansara's bottles to be far less gaudy in some ways, but I'm just gonna put Mansara in there as well for all the same reasons that I mentioned for Montal. Next on the list is Creed. <laughs> and I know I'm going after the jugular on this one. Creed is another house that hasn't released anything good in years, years. The last thing they released that was significantly worth trying was Aventus, and that was a long time ago. Creed is also one of those houses that has a ton of fragrances that no one knows of and no one has heard of and that no one cares about. No one cares about, what is it, Royal Scottish Lavender? <laughs> Now, this isn't to say that Creed is bad by any means. They definitely have fragrances that I think are worth it, and I have some that I really enjoy. But once you go through some of the greatest hits of bygone eras with the line, you'll kind of find that they aren't doing anything else anymore, and they're not doing anything new anymore. Aventus was their last successful fragrance, and Aventus Cologne is a miserable, ugly flanker of Aventus. It's awful. And then Viking, it's just boring and uninspired, I think. A lot of their fragrances are like that. Don't even get me started on the women's line of the fragrances, which I think are even more boring. Now, maybe they will come out with something new that is legitimately good, but I find that Creed is a victim of its own success. Once it got a taste of really good mainstream success with Aventus, I find that they don't want to go back to where they were before, releasing fragrances in their own style, in their own way. You're never gonna find another Erolfa. You're never gonna find another Millicene Imperial. You're never gonna find another Bois du Portugal. You're gonna find another Aventus Night or Blue de Aventus or something like that. They're gonna milk Aventus until it dies. And that is why I think Creed has utterly failed me. Next is Bond number nine. Bond number nine, to me, in my opinion, had a lot more success 
years ago, especially within the fragrance community, there were a lot more people that were really interested in what Bond Number no. 9 was doing. And they have a catalog that is really big and, and just unwieldy. Most of their fragrances, I, I just don't think are that great. I think they're just okay at best. They don't smell particularly great, especially for the price that they have. The fragrances that I used to have by Bond Number no. 9, I sold just because I found that I didn't wear them a lot. And fragrances that were similar in that similar kind of style and genre, I wore a lot more. Now, I don't know when they're gonna stop making fragrances, probably when they run out of street names in New York. <laughs> but that's one thing that is kind of confusing about the line that I don't like. The name of the fragrance doesn't describe what the fragrance smells like. So sometimes that can be kind of a very confusing aspect of the line. Now maybe some people really like that aspect and that's a fair criticism. I think some people will like that and some people won't. But for me, I haven't found anything new come out of Bond Number no. 9 that I think has been really good. I think most of the stuff that they've made has just been passable. And they're just kind of going through naming all the streets in New York and eventually they'll just run out. Next is Amouage. <laughs> now, Amouage is a fragrance line that we actually started to review years ago, and we went through several of their line. But the reason that we stopped at that time was because we just didn't like the line. There's only like maybe three tops that I think are really good and wearable. The rest, they just aren't wearable most of the time. Now, obviously, people are gonna disagree with me here too, but I can't find a reason that I'd wanna wear Fate Man. And some fragrances, though I think they're good, like Honor Man or even Memoir Man, I just can't really find an occasion to really want to wear it when I can wear other fragrances that are similar that I think do it far better. That left me with the rest of the line, which I really just don't get and I don't really like at all. Some people really like Amouage because of how different they are, but I find that they're just too experimental and they're not really fragrances that you want to wear all the time. And honestly, most of the fragrances that they come out with, I just dislike, frankly dislike, or even hate, despise. So it came to a point where we stopped reviewing Amouage fragrances, and I even got people who asked, why? Why, are you, why aren't you reviewing these fragrances anymore? And the reason really is, I'm tired of getting a new fragrance from Amouage and being like, uh, I don't really like it, I hate it, stuff like that. It just became predictable. Number two is Tom Ford. Now, <laughs> now we're getting a little serious here. All right, Tom Ford is a great line sometimes, but what I really don't like about Tom Ford is they haven't made a good fragrance in, it's been a long, long, long time. When their initial private blend line came out, I thought almost all of them were spectacular. A lot of great scents in that line. And still the ones that I think are the best in the private blend line are still there. The problem though is that they have a very shotgun approach when it comes to fragrances. They fire off, you know, three to five private blend line at a time and see what sticks. And I don't appreciate that at all. They're constantly just getting rid of old fragrances that didn't sell well, and maybe they'll keep one or two uh, eventually. But what I really hate about that is that if you like a fragrance that just comes out in the private blend line, there's a really high chance that it won't be there next year and it'll be discontinued. Though I understand when some fragrances get discontinued, I don't like the model of, let's discontinue it right away. Maybe they should just focus their efforts more on making a fragrance that they think will sell or maybe they focus their efforts on making a good fragrance instead of making three to five at a time. Another complaint that I have is that some of the fragrances that I used to love, I just don't love anymore. Tuscan Leather, I found that that raspberry note was really screechy and very, very sweet, and it didn't really smell much like leather. Tobacco Vanille smells more like cinnamon to me than anything else. It doesn't have much of a tobacco smell to me. And it's really sticky and it gets pretty powdery in the end. Then you have other fragrances in their regular kind of signature line, which I think are usually better than their private blend line. Which, why? Why are these better than the private blend line? It should be the other way around. But I find that they're actually pressing the envelope more with some of their fragrances, like with Black Orchid and with Grey Vetiver and Tom Ford Noir, but they stay longer. They'll stay in the line a lot longer. If a new fragrance comes out, I'm probably not even interested in trying it at all because I know that within a year's time, it's gonna be gone. So why should I care? And the last fragrance on my list is Thierry Mugler, or now, just Mugler. When I first started in the fragrance community nine years ago, this was, you know, mega popular in the community. Everyone wanted Pure Malt. Everyone wanted the latest Thierry Mugler flanker. And there truly were some great flankers that came out from the line. Of course, you have the original Amen, then you have Pure Coffee, Pure Malt, Pure Havan. All of these are excellent fragrances. And there was a time 
When Pure Malt was discontinued and almost impossible to find, and on eBay, it sold for over $300 a bottle, and people were buying it. But once you got past Pure Malt and Pure Havan, then it really started to show how they just didn't have a plan at that point. They wanted to ride on the success that they got from those flankers and from the Amen line, and so they started to release more flankers that didn't really make any sense, and they weren't really that great. Pure Shot, or as it was renamed, Pure Energy, Sun Essence, <laughs> Iceman, Orange Zest, they had Pure Leather and Pure Wood, and all of these fragrances, I just, they're not that great. They're just not that great. On the women's side, they're just constantly making alien flankers and angel flankers every year. They come out with a new one, and they're almost even worse. The alien flankers are only slightly changed from the original alien. My friend on the channel, Jer, we actually at one point made a video specifically for Theo Mugler and gave our suggestions about what to do. Some of those they actually did, and they came out with an alien uh, man, which turned out to be not great. And then they made a flanker line to Mugler Cologne, which was another one of our ideas, which I think is a great idea in theory. And I think they did a pretty good job. Once I saw Alien Man come out, I really realized that our opinions have a weight with them and they really listen to the opinions of others, but they're really limited by what they can do. And ultimately, I just think that they just can't do what we want them to do. They can't make the good fragrances they want to make anymore. They're just stuck in this fragrance coma vegetable state in which they're releasing fragrances every year, but they're not releasing anything that is lively and filled with life and energy, and it's just not good anymore. All of these houses, I hope, will change. I don't want to dislike any of these houses. I really do hope they come out with a new fragrance that I like, and some of these houses still have fragrances that I want to keep, like Creed, but I'm just not optimistic about these lines anymore, and I really don't care for them anymore. With that, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Fragrance X. Fragrance X is an online retailer that sells thousands of legitimate fragrances for a discounted price. If you're considering buying a fragrance, definitely check out Fragrance X. I'll have a link down below to them as well as a coupon. But what do you think? I would love to know your thoughts here. What do you think of these fragrance houses? Have these let you down? What are some that have let you down? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I love you for it. And click that little bell so you get a notification every time I make an upload. I'll see you next time. I'm Dave with the Fragrance Bros. Bye.